<laughs> All right, hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Monster Camp here on the 13 Days of Monster Ween. Yeah, yeah, it's still the 13 Days of Monster Ween. It goes until Halloween. Shut up. <laughs> As I'm about to take a sip of beverage. Right out of the gate. But speaking of beverages, uh, we unlocked three new beverages. We got the Stat Smoothie, we have the Flask Genie, and we have Poison. Literal Poison. That's all it was. Uh, the game crashed at the end of Dahlia's run, so I assume that's what we unlocked at the end of that. So it booted up. But I also just want to show you uh, an update to the game, which you guys probably won't be seeing this for another few days. But uh, this just went through after I finished the other run, is they have the filter different because it was almost impossible to tell which ones were on and which ones were off. Because I didn't know, I guess I guessed that pink was on, and see that's to, that to me is off. That to me is on, right? But before they had it differently, so now they actually have it, so you can toggle them: allow, block, allow, block. So we allow everything because we want to see that natural beauty esqueness that is Monster Camp. And uh, I'm gonna put the default monsters and the classic monsters pack on. Why not? And as always, super sexy B Damien, in case that ever pops up. But here we go. We're already two minutes in. We haven't even started, so. Let's get rocking, shall we? Full game. Always a full game. Never a short game. Never. Ah, uh, camps poopy skip. And today, I'm going to go with Amira. Got to do it. You know what, Red? And I've got the custom names, actually. You guys have submitted me like 12 custom names by now. And so I'm just going to randomly pick one here. And eh. Which one? Okay. So oh, the name we've got today is... It's not Beef. It's actually Biff. But we're going to go Biff. <laughs> just a little bit of Biff. Would, would, would y'all like some biff on your plate? A little bit of biff on the plate. And we'll go with she today because we've done he and they. So why not? We'll give everybody a little taste. All right. So today we're going to be going for Ravi. So let's see. What would Ravi... Well, Ravi would want multi-tool. I'm thinking maybe smarts and boldness for Ravi. Uh, the anchor arms. Yes. Fun and boldness. Of course. Sketchbook. Cult ring. Scott snacks. The smallest violin, a blade blade, magma trekking boots, and a sleepy beauty bag. A sleeping... Oh, I thought it said... Yeah, no, I read that right. Sleeping beauty bag. Okay, got it. Got it. Um, let's go with the... Uh, should I go with the blade or the trek trekking boots? I mean, if we do that, our boldness is going to be maximum, so let's just do it. We are now very fun and very bold. One might say that Monster Prom is a bunch of blah, blah, blah. Shmadabada. Last thing. Doesn't matter. We all know who they are. Oh, I guess it's already running. I guess I can't skip it. So, which of these would be your favorite food? Burning hot wings, a yummy USB, a wine to die for, a punch to the face, the nicest guac, or whatever gives you the best stats? Huh, I wonder which one's Ravi. Probably this one. Cause considering Ravi is always, always on those stats. I guess we're also kind of going to be trying to date Hex too, huh? So, whoa, same here, Beef. I like your style. All snacks a lot here will eat anything and everything that even looks like a bagel, but I only eat to fuel my body. Huh? Are you talking about me? What's wrong with enjoying a couple of empty carbs every 10 minutes? The only stat I care about is raising my bagel craving stat. See what I put up with? At least you understand me, Beef. I bet camp's going to be a lot more fun with you around. Yeah, we've set the wheels in motion. We only had five weeks. We already know all that shtick. We can just... Save us six minutes of talking by pressing escape and getting right through. So I don't know if any of you know, but uh, by the time this video goes up or shortly after, uh, I believe, what is it, Super Rare Games? Super Rare Games is going to be having a physical edition of Monster Prom Double XL uh, available for the Nintendo Switch on their website soon. So if you care and you are one of those people who really enjoy Monster Prom and wish to have a physical version. Uh, there's a Steelbook Collector's Edition and like a regular Steelbook Edition available on the uh, on their website. So I'm not sponsored or anything. I just really want to be able to show you guys like, hey, this is pretty cool. If you, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, there you go. But we need to get that boldness up a little bit higher, right? So damn girl, shit, we looking good today. You decide to get your tarot cards read while you're in the haunted manor. The wicked old lady who offers you the service said it'd be fun. The first card she flips over shows a photorealistic drawing of you flying on a hang glider directly into power lines. Is that good, you ask, the psychic. She wordlessly puts her cards away and vanishes into the darkness. It's probably fine. You gain plus two boldness and a fun new phobia. 
yeah, I probably wouldn't be hang gliding anyway. I don't know about you guys, but uh, 17,000 pound fatties like me, gravity loves us. <laughs> gravity works overtime. You're hoping to run into your gal Ravi, but so far she hasn't been any of the places you'd expect. The mines, the dungeons, the forest. You heard Camp Spooky was doing an arts and crafts pop-up session, so you go over to pass the time and are shocked to find Ravi already there. Oh shit! Nice! Nice! That's a good outfit. Top tier outfit. I like it. Wait, is that supposed to be like Bloodborne, I guess? I think it's supposed to be like a Bloodborne-esque kind of thing, or maybe like a vamp- Oh no, Vampire Hunter, yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yes, yes. This slump-molded earthenware masterpiece will be one of my finest works yet. <sighs> oh, hello there, Beef. Welcome to my purgatory of boredom and suffering. <laughs> you mean your craftatorial potdom and creating? No, I meant what I said the first time. In that case, can we make no complaining our next rule of compromise? Because you're harshing my pottery buzz. You see what I have to put up with? Hex gets super into any random activity they see on TV and immediately wants to go try it out. They watched a documentary on Mesopotamia and all they took away from it was pot and immediately threw themselves into this obnoxious new hobby. They've been leaving little curse-shaped clay prints all over my nice adventuring gear. <laughs> Which you've been wearing because I graciously agree to accompany you on quests, just like you graciously indulge in my hobbies too. See, that's how this give and take works. Well, I want to give you a punch in the face and take all this clay away from you so we can do something less boring. You think watching paint dry is boring? Try watching clay dry. At least a painting is a picture of something. Oh, you think watching paint dry is boring? Try watching clay dry. At least a painting of a picture of something is... Why can't you let yourself enjoy my newfound love of pottery? Pots are beautiful. The only time I ever care about pots is when I can smash them and get groupies. All right, she's Link, got it. Zelda, I know why we like this girl. We too enjoy the Zeldas. Hmm, that may be the only circumstance in which Ravi cares about pots, but one circumstance is better than no circumstance, and you know just how to use it. Guilt trip, ask Ravi to make pots to give back to the poor old man whose hundreds of pots she has broken over the last several months. Fuck guilt, Ravi should make her own pots, then break those to get rupees. Infinite money. Hmm. Hmm. So this could be fun. Well, I guess it could be fun or boldness or smarts, right? This could possibly be charming because we'd have to guilt trip. So let's, I'm, I'm going to avoid the first one because guilt tripping, I don't know if that's going to be smart or charming, but we're going to go with the bottom one here. Oh, it's bold. Nice. Good stuff. Oh, wow. Beef, you're some kind of adventuring genius. Why did I never think of that? Maybe because that's definitely not how that works. Psh, yeah. <laughs> Psh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Just psh, yeah. Psh, ye of little faith. You'll be eating your words on a Cheeto M&M &M bagel sandwich. Mm, I do love those. When I come out of this situation with unlimited money. You and Robbie sitting big and making a pot together. Ghost style at the pottery wheel. Uh, that's a reference to an old, like, 80s movie. 80s or maybe... Ooh, it could be even earlier than 80s. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie Ghost. But uh, if you know, you know. It's super romantic. Uh, if you actually want to see the scene, just put in ghost pottery or ghost movie pottery. You'll find it. I'm going to dive into an entire chamber full of rupees and swim through them. Okay, Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> or at least it would be if Ravi were slightly less fixated on the prospect of infinite money. But you guys are still getting to touch each other. But you guys are still getting to touch each other and stuff, so whatever. You and Robbie finish crafting your first pot. Hmm, it's not terrible, it's not perfect, but some of those flaws could be hid with a proper glaze. No glaze, just smash! Robbie smashes her pot before even taking it off the wheel, and yet... Holy shit! How how were there rupees in there? I did you put them in when I wasn't watching, did you? I? That's an exclamation point, not an eye. Oh god, I'm so confused. Nope, it's like you've never been on an adventure before, Hex. Smash pots, get rupees! I... I'm amazed and I don't know what to say. Say you'll watch me make the shit out of, and subsequently break the shit out of, a whole bunch of rupee spawning pots! Robbie goes into a pottery making frenzy. Her eyes gleam as she throws pot after pot, both throwing a pot on the wheel and then throwing a pot at the wall. Rupees raining. Hmm, you know, given the cost of materials, she actually isn't making a huge profit with the strategy. 
But as even as fast as she's going, her pottery technique is actually improving. Like the lip on that last pot was much more even than the one before, and the thickness is getting more consistent. <laughs> In the timeless eternal words of the ancient Mesopotamians, hella lit fam, yeet. <laughs> I don't believe they said that, Hex. Hex has a great time getting to review Robbie's pottery skills. Robbie has a great time getting rupees, and you have a great time getting two creativity and one charm. Nice. I like, thank you. How come it always takes like 15 minutes to get our first stat ups? Like, geez. It's my turn. Oh man, losers, it's my turn? Nice. Get in, losers, we're going camping. Okay, so let's see, we got boldness, we got charm, we got fun. Uh, let's get our boldness up over 10, then we'll hit the lake, shall we? I still like that, it's a nice picture, I like it. That day in the haunted manor, a little clown man rides a tricycle up to you and asks if you would like to play a game. Cool, you love games. You suggest Monopoly or Scattergories. The clown man tells you to find the exit key in an hour or he's going to rip all your skin off. You're not super into that idea, so you two decide to compromise by going to an escape room and solving some puzzles together. It's lots of fun, but you don't gain fun here. You gain boldness instead, two of it. You meet Ravi and Hex afterwards for some yoga and are shocked to discover that it was actually yoga. <laughs> Namaste, Beef. I saw a two-minute yoga video on Instagram and I'm obsessed. Did you know it involves breathing? Oh, how exotic. At first I was pissed at Hex for making me do this, but I'm actually super into it. I'm gonna get so fucking relaxed my head will explode. Oh shit, it's Sky and Polly? Yo, what up, Polly? How you doing, girl? Haven't seen you in a while. What up? Did someone say sausages? No, nobody said sausages. Oh man, I get to do the Polly voice again. Oh man, some people are gonna be so happy. I know a few people who absolutely love the Polly the Polly voice. So it's okay, Scott. One of these days, someone will have said sausages, and then they'll eat. Sorry. Thanks, Polly. Well, if you guys aren't talking about sausages, what are you doing? We are doing yoga. I even found a pose that's perfect for you. It's called upward facing dog. Oh, uh, we all know about up dog. Of course, Aaron Hansen's character would say up dog. Of course. Of course he'd say up dog. And it's Evil Twin, downward facing dog. We're yoga masters with an S. Really? You guys know about yoga? Is that why you're so relaxed all the time? Uh, yup. That's exactly why I'm so relaxed all the time. And for no other reason. We discovered yoga a while back and found it kind of underwhelming. But we stuck with it and made it better, and now we can proudly say that we're the best yogaists in the world. Psst, Polly, I think it's yogazoids. <laughs> oh, come on, no way you guys are yoga experts. You're right, because we're yoga masters, duh, and no one's ever gonna beat our yoga high score. <laughs> high score, you say? 200,000 yoga points in a single session, it's unbeatable. No! Nothing is unbeatable! I just need the right strategy! Ah, but what is it? Yoga pants are all well and good, but to be a true yogazoid, you need a set of legendary yoga armor. The key to yoga is the sequence of poses, specifically up dog, up dog, down dog, down dog, left dog, right dog, left dog, right dog, B dog, A dog, start. Oh yes, the Konami dog code. I know it well. Let's see, so that could be smarts. Because it's, it's literally saying, you know, you need to know a code. You need to know something secret. Could also be fun, though. But this could be boldness or creativity. Legendary armor. Hmm. The key to yoga is a sequence of poses. That sounds like smarts to me. This sounds like fun or anything else. So let's try it with this. Yes, it was boldness. I knew it. Armor's always going to be bold. So, yeah, it looks like smarts and boldness maybe for Ravi. Right? Intellect for delving dungeons and boldness for having the courage to do so. So maybe we'll have to go and get our uh, our smarts up next. Legendary yoga armor? I had no idea such a thing existed. You looted a set from your last bloody raid on Lululemon, but never wore it because fuck exercise. Whoa, check out this yoga breastplate. Plus 20 to breathing and in and breathing out. And these yoga greaves. Plus 32 flexibility when flanking an enemy. Of course, let's not forget about these boots of yoga, plus 50 to kicking someone in the face so hard their head explodes, meditatively. Thanks for the armor, Beef. I'm about to use it to kick some tranquil ass. Oh shit, yoga armor. 
Yo, that's dope. I love it. Yoga armor. It's awesome. Nice. Ravi dons the yoga armor and proceeds to bust the worst insane series of yoga moves you've ever seen. Oh, bust the most insane. I said worst insane. What? What? I don't believe it. Her yoga level. It's over 9,000. Ravi yoga so hard she beats yoga and starts over with yoga, which she also beats. It turns out that Yoga... Oh, Yoga Plus. I thought I said Yoga. <laughs> yoga Plus, because New Game Plus. Got it. I'm an idiot. I can... Words are hard. I can read. It turns out Yoga Plus is just yoga with more twerking, but you're not complaining. Upon completing Yoga Plus, Arabi's eyes begin to glow with an unearthly light, and she floats off the ground. No, it can't be. <laughs> we. I have achieved Nirvana. The world of attachments no longer has any hold on me. I am free from the wheel of Samsara, which binds us to the cycle of suffering. Hey, that gives me plus 10 to my wisdom stat. Sick. I'm going to use it to learn a fire spell. Whew. Looks like Robbie's not totally free of the world of attachments after all, which is good because you sort of think she might be becoming attached to you. You gain two fun and one boldness. Nice. Nice. Always liking it. Always fresh. Always dope. Always clean. Uh, let, let's, in tradition, since our last success was good, let's go talk to Mossman first, huh? See what, uh, see what stuff he's got going. <laughs> Hi there, Beef. Thank you for joining me and my dog. Oh, I thought it said me and my dog. Uh, dyslexia, I guess. <laughs> say, would you say that we are friends? Sure, why not? <laughs> Wonderful, why don't we do some friendship things while we're sitting by the fire together then? Hmm? What, like eat a platter of cheese, do anger management courses, or summon a dark spirit like your other friends often do by the campfire? What? No, that sounds insane. Is that what you guys do while I sit over here by myself? I was thinking we could initiate our friendship with something a bit tamer, like spreading lies and subterfuge about people in the form of juicy gossip. Well, considering Damien is just going around stabbing all the other logs, that does sound like the most fun campfire side activity right now. Let's gossip. Oh, ho, 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 ho. moist, sublime, thick, or mo molecular. <clears throat> uh, I believe the correct answer for these four options is the one word we all love the most. Moist. I know that's going to, like, make some people absolutely lose their shit. And it fuels me. Thank you. Please put your hate in the comments. <laughs> uh, honestly, I know some people hate the word moist, but I love the I love the way it sounds. I love the O I, like the O I with the S to the T. I love it. The way the uh, moist, it's so good. It's a nice word. I like the sound it makes. An origami knife, the common cold, a hamster who's a trained assassin, the power of God and anime. Hmm. I mean, anime is already pretty moist, yeah. I mean, that's also moist. That's definitely not moist. I mean, it will be when you stab someone. And a hamster who's a trained assassin? Definitely not moist. Breaking a sweat is not an assassin's job. Assassins do not break sweat. They glisten. Uh, let's go the power of God in anime. Alright, type in something bigger than a seagull. Oh, bigger than a seagull? Oh, like, as an animal? Alright, how about, um... You know what? We're gonna go with the biggest thing I can think of. We're gonna go with Waylord. The Pokemon. Incredible! The more I learn about my fellow campmates, the more confused and afraid I am. I'd better spread this gossip around so everyone knows just how absurd the world we live in is. Like someone leaving their phone on while they're recording. <laughs> you heard his ringtone. Like tossing a breadcrumb to a flock of ravenous pigeons, your friends immediately devour and circulate your rumor. Oh yeah, it's the Lich. Somebody said his name might have been like Larry the Lich or something, possibly. But I know he's a Lich, Skeletor. Holy shit, did you hear that Biff is in a gang? Yes. Yeah, I'm true. serious. The gang was allegedly super fearsome and they called themselves the Moist Crocodiles. Nice. Fitting. Uh. I heard that Beef met the leader, Moist Mike the Wear Crocodile, at a seedy dive bar on the outskirts of town. Beef saw Moist Mike's gang tattoo of a seagull leading a waylord and started asking Mike all about the gang. <laughs> Moist Mike wasn't just going to let Beef in, join, shit, fuck, piss, ass. Beastman! Moist Mike wasn't just going to let Beef join on the spot, however, there were apparently some pretty rigorous challenges to overcome first. Beef had to prank a cop, steal two gallons of blood, and even dry up a red light. 
but none of that stuff compared to the final challenge. We've had to fight Moist Mike himself using only the power of God and anime! Beef won the battle, and she was in the gang for a long time, almost two whole years. She eventually left, though, because she realized that she was too badass for that crowd. But if you ever see Beef's seagull tattoo, now you know what it's for. Weird, huh? Beef's new gang reputation earns her four boldness. Okay, we can we can we can axe the boldness. We don't need normal boldness. We are good on boldness. I go, so I believe what is it? Smarts is the woods. Yeah, okay, I guess smarts is the woods. Let's go for it. Oh, nice. We got oh we got marshmallows. I guess that would be the perfect thing for your flaming hair. Would be to bring a sack of marshmallows. While hiking through the woods, you're approached by an NPC who has a quest for you. You can tell she's an NPC because she only says the same four things over and over and keeps doing the same idle animation. The NPC's quest is to deliver a very important scroll to her father. She makes it extremely clear that no one else is allowed to read it or terrible things will happen. You read it, of course. It turns out it's her father's secret recipe to the perfect peach cobbler. Looks like her dad is never going to make that famed dessert in time for the NPC family potluck because you eat the recipe scroll and gain two smarts. Nice. Devour knowledge, so we gain knowledge. Whoa! Nice! Is that Thanatos from Hades? It looks like a little bit of Thanatos. And then, oh, is that friggin'... Oh, I know that... Is that the, uh... Shiza? I doubt it is, but it kind of looks like the Mega Maid ship from Spaceballs, but I don't think it is. What's well, Calculister, guys? Put it in the comments. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. The sky is clear, the birds are singing, and you, a robot, a cursed monster slayer, and a death-bringing reaper, are merrily skipping through the woods, hunting a leprechaun. So what's the deal with killing this leprechaun? How many experience am I going to get? Do I get a sneak bonus if I attack from behind? Error. Due to the sixth math's execution, the slaying of leprechauns is inadvisable. They are considered endangered by the United Monsters Nations. Yeah, I'm not really interested in working today. I figured we'd grab him, get some sweet pics for the gram, stick a pot of gold emoji on there, then release him and call it a day. Speaking of the gram, this is one of the only spots in the woods I haven't posted pics of yet. Hop in, everyone. It's selfie time. I was kind of giving him Hex's voice there for a second. Apologies. Sometimes Hex just moves me so much if he's on the screen. You gather around for a cute pic of ironic duck face dabbing in bunny ears. Lit. Uploading, 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 uploading. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I am using the word hate idiomatically here because technically I feel nothing, but there appears to be no reception here. What? Ah, it's such bullshit. With no connectivity, my party has lost their buffs. Totally non optimal. My memories are unable to back up, and with no internet access, I am unable to continuously learn and download updated information to correct any mistakes. What if I become racist? Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's the face he's making. Oh, what if I connect to the internet and hashtag calculester is over is trending because I have become problematic. You're worried if I don't post in the next five minutes, all my followers will think I've died and I won't even be online to reap the pity likes. Hey, chill out, guys. Being online isn't everything. Let's just hang tight and order a pizza. Oh, no, we can't. We have no service. Oh, fuck. Where am I going to get pizza? We need the internet. Stat. Yikes. Seems like your friends are spiraling out of control. Of course, you could use this as a teachable moment about your extreme dependence on the internet. But you're not going to do that. Lol. You're taking the easy way out and snagging some net. Here's how. What we need is a long wireless antenna. Hey, wait, what's that between your legs, Calculester? Boing. We just need to lure the internet out into the woods. Quick, create some content. That could, okay, that's probably creative or smart. Uh, or fun, or fun, it could be fun. What we need is a long wireless antenna. That's probably charm, so let's go with the second option. <gasps> Not so creative, oh no! Oh no! Oh no, it was probably boldness. Oh no, I just assumed because it was a penis joke. <laughs> I assumed because it was a penis joke, it was charm. I will never turn down the opportunity to create more content. The question is, what kind? I've got this, a speedrun of me killing all the animals in the woods. Not really vibing with me. I was thinking more along the lines of, like, an unboxing of the hot new scythe I just got. Robbie's wins, since it can be followed by a culinary review of how the animals taste when I swallow them whole. Unless I can eat your murder tools, in which case, either rocks. My friends, the most foolproof option would be to generate content based on an algorithm of what people want to see most. 
I suggest we post an image of Shrek impregnated by several characters from My Little Pony. Oh, wow! That is relatable! Oh, boy! Calculus, you've been on the wrong parts of the internet, my dude. We told you not to go there. Why would you suggest that? Well, really, the algorithm suggested it. As your friends start to argue between an extreme mosquito swatting Let's Play versus novel-length Sonic fanfiction, you have a sudden realization that they're probably going to read Little Sonic, all the weird fanfiction of Little Sonic having sex with the peaches. Labeling all of the many possibilities artistic achievements. Labeling all of the many possible artistic achievements in life as simply content created to fish for digital clicks, downgrades, and commodifies artistic expression. You share this revelation with your friends prepared to blow their freaking minds, but... Wow, that's terrible content. For real, no one would like to subscribe to that pretentious shit. They start brainstorming hentai nail art ideas, but you are not invited to pitch your favorite crossover ship, even though it's Sailor Mercury X Mr. Monopoly. Nice. <laughs> I don't know why, but nice. You left out of the conversation entirely, costing you two smarts and one fun. Shit, I just got that smarts. Goddamn. Goddamn. Show time. Guess we gotta go back. We need that smarts. While you're hiking through the woods, you accidentally step on a pile of leaves covering a massive hole. It was a trap, an evil goblin hunter. Is it a goblin who hunts or someone who hunts goblins? You'll never know, appears. They were the one who put the trap in there. This is it, you're done, you get ready to embrace death, but the goblin hunter only set the trap to get someone to help him to do their math homework. They'll only let you leave if you help them, you don't have any other option here. It's a bit boring, but you actually learn some useful calculus, you gain two smarts. Later, you join Dahlia, Ravi, and Hex for a high-stakes round of bird watching. Oh, shit! Look at Dahlia's Oniware! Nice, nice, nice. I like it. I like it. I guess it's because she looks like an Oni, like one of the Japanese demons, right? It's pretty cool. I like it. Yes! Is there anything more thrilling than two gals and their accursed pal sitting quietly and waiting patiently for a bird to land on the ground in front of them? Actually, I can think of several things more exciting than this. I'm just here to loot some feathers from my brightly plumed enemies collection and complete my pigeon decks. <laughs> oh, lighten up, Robbie. Bird watching is the best, and in the six hours since I discovered it, I've basically become an expert. I too am fully committed. I even bought a book for this. And according to Naughty Pete's Guide for Avian Voyeurs, the best bird to watch of them all is the... I was going to say butt shit, but it's the bush tit. <laughs> or the butt shit, I guess. The what? Are you sure you didn't pick up a porno mag by accident? A porno mag? I meant mag. Mig. A porno mig. Oh, you're just watching porno migs. No? Why would you even imply that? Not to be confused with the mammalian breast, the bush tit is a soft, diminutive creature that I could easily crush with my bare fists. But I choose not to because its puffiness pleases me. How does Naughty Pete say we should find the bird? Oh, Naughty Pete doesn't really dabble in the whole method of bird watching. Once he identifies the birds, it dissolves into more of a hardcore erotica thing. But that's where Hex comes in. You're an expert on this, right? Point me in the right direction of the titty! Yep. Yep. That's that's a thing I just had to say. <laughs> well, the first step to any adventure is to eat a snack. Oh, um, okay, I, I guess I can eat this raw steak I was saving for later. What's step two? What do you mean? I never said this was a multi-step program. <laughs> Eating's the only step. You have no idea how to birdwatch, do you? What kind of question is that? You look at birds. Occasionally I put my own spin on it by watching Big Brother in between watching birds. It isn't rocket science. Well, that's not good enough for me. Ravi, you're better at this whole strategy stuff than I am. How would you summon an enemy from hiding? Well, besides just slaughtering the entire ecosystem it's hiding in to save time, I might try luring it out with some food or by mimicking the screams of its family, or... Wait, that's it! We'll just mimic the bullshits cry. The bullshits cry. I can't say that word. Words are hard. We'll just mimic the... But I can't say butch. It's butch shit every time. We'll just mimic the bush tits cry. But what sort of bird call would we make that would lure the foe from hiding? Do you have any ideas, Beef? Don't just attract the bird. Snare it with bird trap music. Use the one call no bird can resist. A booty call. <laughs> See, that sounds charming to me. Or it could be boldness, I guess? Would that be boldness or charming? But this sounds creative, and our creativity isn't that high, so let's go with booty call, I guess. No, see, it's freaking charming! I thought it was boldness! God damn it, I'm gonna lose. You produce your booty call whistle from your satchel and blow, producing the characteristic mating call. You up, you up, you up. Do you seriously expect that to work? Nobody likes a thirsty bird watcher, Beef. 
Well, apparently one guy does. Look what the horn dog dragged in, everybody. You all watch as a scantily clad vulture saunters its way into the clearing looking for love. Uh-oh, you're in trouble, Beef. I've studied animal husbandry, and based on this bird's body language, it's not here just for sex. Haha, <laughs> how can you tell? Do you like long walks on the beach, the vulture cause? How many kids do you want? <laughs> Are you serious, Beef? How long have you and this vulture had this secret love affair going on? And why would you bring us to your clandestine rendezvous? What is she talking about? You start to protest that you have not now, nor have you ever, had romantic feelings for this vulture. Oh, so what you're telling me is that you've just been leading this poor thing on? That's fucking sick! Crap, there's no winning this one. In a moan of panic, you flee the woods, hotly pursued by this bespotted vulture. You lose it eventually, but your friends are still dubious of your romantic intentions with it, which doesn't help your chances of making any romantic advances with them. You lose two smarts and one charm. God damn it, I can't win in the woods. The woods are my kryptonite. I just cannot win. So I've got to sit with Robbie then, because I need, I need to get the affection up, so i got to sit with her. Later, you're craving a healthy dose of attention from your peers when you spot Dahlia and Ravi by the campfire. So, once I ripped his biceps off, he pretty much knew I'd won, but he still agreed when I asked him to get in a quick makeout before I delivered the mortal blow. So awesome! Oh my god! Dahlia, you boss blue babe, you are so bad! Looks like Dahlia, Ravi, and Hex are conducting one of their classic girl talk sessions. You butt in as usual. You can join our girl talk if you want, Beef, but you better be conversing at the top of your game. Today we're discussing the ultimate girl talk subject, crushes! Ravi, you drew the short bone in the rabbit spine, so you're first. Who's your secret crush? The rules of girl talk dictate that you have to tell us, or at least give us hints. Whoa, is Ravi about to admit that she has an emotion, and that emotion is romantic in nature? Holy shit, and she feels that towards another person, and not a battle axe. Come on, you guys, do I really have to say it? <laughs> well, if I have to admit it, I've always had a secret crush on that centaur mini-boss that lives right outside the woods. <laughs> Robbie, are you fucking serious? Is that why we keep taking those patrol shifts on the forest perimeter? Those were at 3 a.m., Robbie. Whatever! I know it's kind of embarrassing, but he's pretty buff, and I want to hear all the muscle squelching sounds when I crush him. Um, what? Okay, I admitted mine. Now you have to say yours, Dahlia. Tell us who's your secret crush. Hmm, this is kind of tough, because I usually just tell someone directly when I'm crushing on them. I don't really bother keeping my crushes a secret. But I guess my current number one crush is Timothy... Timothy Chalamet? Don't know that name. I can't stop fantasizing about crushing him. Just one of my boots could crush all of his bones. We're meant to be! Dear God, by crushes, Dahlia and Robbie literally mean people that they want to crush. Every time I get a new crush, I totally get this intense feeling of butterflies in my stomach. It lasts right up until I stomp the last drop of blood out. <laughs> So yeah, it's typos. It happens. Ha! I get that too, and I get kind of jealous. I don't like anyone else to crush my victims. What about you, Beef? Any crushes you should know about? Dolly and Robbie just gave you the perfect opportunity to hint that you're interested in one of them, flex your girl talk skills, and crush this convo. If I'm crushing on someone, I go all in. I gear up with every weapon and toy I can think of. I'm kinky that way. Thing is, I'm more of a crush E than a crusher. My middle name is Step On Me. <laughs> I guess that's for Dahlias. I think this one would be for Robbie. Hopefully. There we go. Whoa, Beef! I didn't realize that you were so well-prepared for adventure! <laughs> Robbie, are you blushing right now? Or is that just a side effect of that poison worm potion you drank earlier? What kinds of equipment are you talking about? Oh, and what kind of items do you keep in your quick draw? Anything, uh, really, really dangerous? <laughs> You start by describing all the raw materials in your inventory, including your gold and iridium ores. Then you slowly talk to her through your ranged weapons. Oh, talk her through your ranged weapons. Oh. <laughs> wow, when did you get so much inventory space? You could fit a merchant town in your pockets, Beef. Finally, you show Ravi the first item in your quick draw, your magic wand. Its core is made of mistletoe and ancient whale grease. It's got a plus six buff to your spellcasting. And best of all, it's made of body-safe silicone. Dear gods, that sounds like some fucking top-notch equipment, Beef. It's also upgraded. Yeah, sounds like you've got the gear worthy of a warrior. Hey, do you find that your equipment ever comes in handy for boning? <laughs> I guess she's just direct with it, huh? Happens to me all the time. What? Dahlia, come on. It's not like any of us were thinking about the lewd uses for that wand. Like, for example, how good it would feel if you used it with some climbing rope. Uh... Um... 
Anyway, we should change the subject. Y'all finish up the girl talk by debating which of Timothy Chamelet's bones would be the most fun to crush. Dahlia takes off afterwards, but Ravi grabs you by the sleeve. Uh, Beef, I-, I was kind of impressed with some of that inventory stuff you were talking about back there. Guess you're not as bad at girl talk as I thought you were. Maybe we could battle sometime and uh, see who crushes who? Hell yeah, Ravi is probably going to crush all the cartilage in your face, but you are going to crush your heart with the power of summer romance. Nice. Nice. My emotions are maximum value. Okay, sorry about that. I um, I just took a quick break because uh, a co-worker of mine and a friend of mine sent me a picture of their birthday cake. And um, we often make fun of them at work because uh, we always make fun of them that they're, that they're 30. You know, the whole joke is that, man, geez, you know, you're, you're getting pretty old there, man. You're 30 already. And they're not 30. I think they're turning 26 this year. So... <laughs> So they sent me a picture of their birthday cake, and their wife put a 30 on it, and it said, happy 30th. And I can't believe that that office meme, or the workplace meme, turned into an actual gag, and it made my night. I love it. So, happy 30th out there, buddy. Hope you're enjoying it. Welcome to the club. Weekend arrives, and so it's time to visit Juan, the small magical Latino cat. Wow, look who's here. Really, I don't know who in their right mind would take such a risk to visit my bar. I guess you have more thirst than common sense. Oh, you're damn right I've got more thirst than common sense. Just like everybody watching this video. Anyway, get ready to party. All right. So if we see the Manhattan, we want to go for it. Oh, wait, that's a genie in the bottle. Oh, no, we want to go for the genie in the flask. Hold on. Want to go for the genie, right? No, genie, 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 genie. We want the genie. No, 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 genie, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, no, shit, fuck, shit. Damn it, I wanted the genie, I thought that, I thought the clock was going to run out faster than that, I thought I only had like half a second left, but turns out it didn't, damn it. Well, we got the creativity shots, we know how much it wills, there's our creativity is now huge. This is the part where I leave before you puke all over me, ciao, Bye, Bye, Juan, I'm glad Juan's here, I honestly do, I love Juan. All right, so let's let's do one more option, shall we? Uh, we I think we need our smarts up, guys. We need our smarts. That day you go on a hiking trip with a bunch of random campers. You live some weird adventures and share some personal stories and secrets. You don't know their names and they don't seem to have their own care. Oh yeah, we've, we've done this one. We've heard this one. Okay. Afterward, you're very busy making a friendship bracelet, but spooky when you see Aravi power walking through your location with a look of fierce determination in her eyes. Okay, I slew the dragon of Danger Mountain, found the incredibly rare ruby that somehow grows inside a tree, but only during the eclipse, and only if you've leveled up. I tripped a jackalope and got the mouse's glasses back so I could trade him this seed for the bead and put it on the altar under the well after I drained it using the turtle, and I cleaned the Agan... Is it Agan or Aegean? I think it's Aegean, like Agan? That's, that's, that's the Greek thing for Hercules, right? And I cleaned the Aegean stables and I picked up wizard farts dry cleaning. What's next? Huh, sounds like a Ruby is having quite the day. You ask her why she's doing all of these random tasks. Ugh, don't get me started. She's doing side quests, helping everyone fight their enemies or find rare items, but she can't take five minutes to find me a pizza for my side quest. I already told you ordering a pizza isn't a quest with a high enough XP reward. We'll do that after I do one last real side quest for the day. Want to come along and help out, Beef? Two heads are better than one. Hey, I thought I was your second head. I'm even keeping track of everything like you asked. Oh, great. Let's see what I have left to do. Robert the Robber should date Thomas the Raccoon Landlord. Hex, these are just shipping charts between all my side quest prospects. What's your point? My point is a list of who should fight and who should fuck, and a flowchart of love triangles does nothing for me in terms of figuring out my next novel. I guess it should be move, not novel. I just thought it was a bunch of fanfic that we were writing again. Zoe's coming back to me, you guys. It's just Zoe. I hope Zoe's here somewhere. <laughs> well, all those side quests do nothing for me in terms of finding me a pizza. Look, if I have to power through all these side quests, I may as well add some extra drama through my shipping flowcharts so it plays some sort of telenovela in my mind. Luckily for Ravi, evaluating bonkers courses of action based on what stats they'll give you is practically the only thing you do. Looking at Hex's notes, it's immediately clear which side quest will unlock the ultimate goal, making Ravi smile. 
help the local mayor to open a TikTok account so he can bond with his teenage son, collect 10 turnips for the town's guard, he's totally not using them to pleasure himself. I think uh, for our stats, the TikTok would probably be better, I think. Hopefully. Fuck, it's charm, goddammit. Jesus Christ, I thought it'd be creativity, goddamn. Son of a bitch, I can't win. Good call. I've defeated dragons and slain monsters, no offense. Found ancient relics and navigated mazes. How hard could helping one old dude with technology be? Video game equivalent of Smash Cut 2. Thank goodness you're here, says the mayor, standing on a pile of on-fire computers. I keep trying to follow all the usual troubleshooting steps. One, turn it off. Two, I can never remember what two is, so I keep having to just set them all on fire. <laughs> I love this guy. What a lunatic. I just want to make some memes. <laughs> he got the memes. Uh, and gifs for my teenage son to enjoy the trick tracks. Oh boy, okay. One thing at a time. It's pronounced memes and gifs with a hard G. I'm with the mayor. I say gif. Hex, you're a fiend! All right, Mr. Mayor, let's get you acquainted with some common memes and you get a sense of this generation's humor. Robbie grabs her phone and pulls up a funny auto-tuned video of a guy in her, his underwear making rainbow slime with help from his cat. Who is he? The mayor asks. I don't know. He's just some guy. But how do you know him? I don't. Then why are you showing it to me? Because it's funny. Why? What's the funny part? I, I don't know. I can't describe it. It's just, it, it's funny. Well, how did you find it? The internet! It's just popular on the internet because it's some stranger being funny in ways I can't pinpoint! Ah! Ravi flees. You're forced to spend the rest of the day explaining thick with two C's and the correct usage of the phrase I'm baby and what emojis pair best with it. I'm baby. <laughs> the mayor underestimates none of it but insists on asking a million questions anyway. It drains you of your life force. You lose two boldness and one smarts. God damn it. I just can't keep my smarts. Ah, but we're halfway through. And so this is the perfect place to leave off. Thank you all for joining me on this episode of Monster Camp, Monster Prom 2 here on the channel. And uh, on the next episode, we're definitely going to be trying to go and finish off Robbie's line. I don't think we're going to make it, you guys. I have failed like four times now. It's just going to be shit show. I have to basically have a perfect run from here on out, hopefully. I've got one, two, three, four, five more choices chances five more chances oh god no please for the love of god but thank you all for joining me and until next time please take care everybody monstrously special thanks to the top tier patreon supporters midnight charizard and cat vanity